Hello and welcome back to our channel, where we discuss important topics related to healthcare. Today we will be talking about sepsis and septic shock. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that occurs when the body's immune system overreacts to an infection, while septic shock is a severe form of sepsis that can cause organ failure and death. So, let's dive in and learn more about sepsis and septic shock. Sepsis is a medical emergency that occurs when the body's immune system overreacts to an infection. This can lead to inflammation throughout the body, which can cause damage to various organs and tissues. Sepsis can occur from any type of infection, including bacterial, viral, or fungal infections. Symptoms of sepsis can include fever, chills, rapid heartbeat, rapid breathing, and confusion. Septic shock is a severe form of sepsis that occurs when the body's immune system responds to an infection causes a drop in blood pressure, which can lead to organ failure and death. Septic shock is a medical emergency that requires immediate treatment in the hospital. Symptoms of septic shock can include low blood pressure, rapid heartbeat, rapid breathing, confusion, and organ failure. The treatment of sepsis and septic shock involves prompt recognition, fluid resuscitation, and antibiotic therapy. Early recognition and treatment of sepsis can improve outcomes and decrease mortality rates. Antibiotic therapy should be started as soon as possible, and healthcare professionals will use various diagnostic tests to identify the specific organism causing the infection. In severe cases of septic shock, patients may require mechanical ventilation, dialysis, or other supportive therapies to maintain organ function. In some cases, surgery may be necessary to remove the source of the infection or to drain an abscess. It's important to note that sepsis and septic shock can occur in anyone, but certain populations are at a higher risk, including older adults, individuals with weakened immune systems, and individuals with chronic medical conditions. Now, let's learn about the pathophysiology of sepsis and septic shock. Septic shock is a complex condition that involves an overreaction of the body's immune system to an infection. It can be caused by bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites. The pathophysiology of septic shock can be divided into three phases. The early phase, the late phase, and the resolution phase. During the early phase, the immune system responds to the infection by releasing inflammatory cytokines, which attract immune cells to the site of infection. These immune cells, such as neutrophils and macrophages, attempt to clear the infection. However, in septic shock, the inflammatory response becomes excessive and can lead to damage to organs and tissues. In the late phase, the immune system's response shifts from being pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. This is known as immunosuppression and can lead to a decrease in the body's ability to fight the infection. This can result in the development of secondary infections and further exacerbate the patient's condition. During the resolution phase, the immune system's response returns to normal, and the body begins to clear the infection. However, in some cases, damage to organs and tissues during the early and late phases can result in organ failure and septic shock. The pathophysiology of septic shock also involves changes in the body's cardiovascular system. The excessive immune response during the early phase can lead to dilation of blood vessels, which can cause a drop in blood pressure. This can lead to decreased blood flow to organs and tissues, which can result in organ damage and failure. In an attempt to compensate for the drop in blood pressure, the body may increase heart rate and cardiac output, which can further exacerbate the organ damage. Understanding the pathophysiology of septic shock is essential for healthcare professionals to recognize the signs and symptoms and provide appropriate medical intervention. Now, let's have a quick look at the symptoms of sepsis. The symptoms of sepsis can be vague and nonspecific, making it difficult to diagnose the condition. Some of the common symptoms of sepsis include fever with chills, rapid heartbeat, rapid breathing, low blood pressure, confusion, and disorientation. In severe cases, patients may experience organ failure, which can be life-threatening. Now let's have a brief look at the diagnosis of sepsis. One of the most common methods used to diagnose sepsis is blood tests. A complete blood count, CBC, can reveal the presence of an infection by identifying an increase in white blood cells. 
Blood tests can also detect other abnormalities, such as elevated levels of lactate, which can indicate tissue damage. Another method used to diagnose sepsis is culture tests. These tests involve taking a sample of blood, urine, or other bodily fluids and testing it for the presence of bacteria or fungi. This can help identify the specific pathogen causing the infection and guide appropriate treatment. In some cases, imaging tests such as X-rays, CT scans, or ultrasounds may be used to diagnose sepsis. These tests can help identify the presence of infection in specific organs or tissues, such as pneumonia or an abscess. Other tests may be used to diagnose sepsis, depending on the specific symptoms and circumstances of the patient. For example, a urine test may be used to detect a urinary tract infection, or a lumbar puncture may be used to test for meningitis. Finally, let's discuss the treatment protocols to follow for sepsis. Here, we will discuss the steps that are taken to manage sepsis and septic shock in the emergency department. Step 1. Assessment The first step in managing sepsis and septic shock is to assess the patient's condition. This includes a review of the patient's medical history, a physical examination, and diagnostic tests, such as blood tests, urine tests, and imaging studies. The goal is to identify the underlying cause of the infection and determine the severity of the sepsis or septic shock. Step 2. Fluid Resuscitation Once sepsis or septic shock is diagnosed, the next step is to initiate fluid resuscitation. This involves giving the patient intravenous fluids to help maintain blood pressure and improve organ perfusion. In some cases, vasopressor medications may also be needed to help maintain blood pressure. Next, antibiotics. The next step in managing sepsis and septic shock is to administer antibiotics. The choice of antibiotics will depend on the suspected or identified pathogen causing the infection. In some cases, broad-spectrum antibiotics may be started initially and then adjusted once the specific pathogen is identified. Step 4. Source Control Source control is another important aspect of managing sepsis and septic shock. This involves identifying and treating the source of the infection, such as draining an abscess or removing a catheter. Source control can help to decrease the bacterial load and improve the effectiveness of antibiotics. Patients with sepsis or septic shock require close monitoring in the emergency department. This may include frequent vital sign checks, monitoring of urine output, and blood tests to evaluate organ function. In some cases, the patient may need to be transferred to an intensive care unit for further management. In conclusion, sepsis and septic shock are serious conditions that require prompt medical attention. In the emergency department, the medical management of sepsis and septic shock involves a comprehensive assessment, fluid resuscitation, antibiotics, source control, and close monitoring. If you or a loved one is experiencing symptoms of sepsis, it's important to seek medical attention immediately. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more informative videos on medical topics.